Welcome to another edition of Demonology Today with Grizzly and Dennis Carroll. But we do have a show in store for you tonight. How are you doing, Dennis? How's everything going with you? Uh, well, going along fine. How about you, Chris? Not too bad. Not too bad. So I contacted you today about an emergency case, didn't I? Hell yeah. So did you get to hear all the uh, audio that I sent you? Yeah, I did. I did get to listen to some of it, yeah. Uh, a very interesting case, definitely. Uh, uh, I think it has some uh, deep ramifications going on there. Um, you know, uh, we've often talked many times about spiritual warfare. And uh, spiritual warfare is brought about by attacks, of course. But we have to, uh, just like in war, there is offensive and defensive, you know. Uh, sometimes you have to go into the defensive mode, and sometimes you have to go on the offensive mode. And uh, when the enemy pushes you, that's when you got to be offensive. That's when you got to go into the offensive uh, posture. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And but but you know sometimes when we're attacked. And we're in the defensive mode. We get stuck there if we're not careful. Uh, we get stuck there, you know, as sort of a desperate kind of a situation where we just keep thinning it off as much as we possible, possibly can. But we don't get to do the offensive thing, you know. We don't get to push it back like we should. Uh, we don't ever want to get in that predicament. Uh, we want to prevent that from ever happening to begin with. Because it can be like a quicksand, spiritual quicksand, you know. If you if you get too deep into it in the morass, you can't get out of it. Uh, and the deeper you go, the worse it is. And the enemy knows this. The enemy knows this without a doubt. No, uh, I'm actually trying to make contact them with them right now. Uh, this is a very situation, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just sent them the link. I don't know if they're watching. Uh, it's very traumatic. Uh, traumatic, I should say. It, it, that's my southern accent coming out. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so, uh, what we got for, what, so what do we got going on for tonight, right? So what, what's our plan for tonight? Well, I'm going to be talking about the demonic plan. What the, the, the demons have in plan and in store for all of us. Uh, and the, big, the big guy, Satan is the instigator of the plan. So we're going to be talking about that some tonight. Definitely. Um, you know, last show, we talked about how insidious the forces of evil have gotten into every aspect of our civilization and our lives, our government, our religion, our education, our media. The list goes on and on. And uh, and like I said uh, last week, and I, and I don't make this statement offhandedly, uh, I wouldn't doubt if some of the CEOs of certain companies are actual demon entities and not humans. Uh, you've got that going on, too. Like I said the uh, last week, there are things out there really walking around. People say, oh, you're crazy, Dennis, but this is true. There are things out there walking around. They look human, but they're not. Okay, and we've got to understand that. And these people may come into our lives, and we need to watch out for that, too. Well, these oh, beings absolutely. may yeah. They show up, yeah. You know, the Bible talks about serpents and scorpions. These are the things that the enemy throws at us. Um, it wouldn't be very nice if I walked up and threw some snakes and scorpions on you, would it? Uh, I would be, you would say, well, no, Dennis is trying I'd to get probably, rid of me uh, here. <laughs> that's exactly say, what I would do. Yeah, you might not say that, but it's exactly, but 
you'd say, well, Dennis is, is kind of my enemy. He wants to get rid of me here. He's throwing snakes and scorpions on me, you know, kind of a thing. And that's what, that's what our enemy does. But these scorpions and serpents may take the form of other things. They may not be the actual serpents and scorpions. They can be people. They can be situations. They can be governments. They can be institutions. They can be all of these different things that come out to attack us. And I'm going to say this, according to what your case was, too, we were talking about earlier. The beginning of all of this can be possession. That is what their ultimate goal is, especially when they begin to influence you, adversely influence you and attack you and try to get as much of a rapport with you going as possible so they can reel you in like a fish on a line. That's the way they operate. So we have to be very careful about that. Uh, the Bible says that our enemy lays snares and traps for us. Absolutely. We, yeah, we've got to be careful. And that's part of spiritual warfare, knowing your enemy. You know, uh, Chris, I've gone to a lot of churches. And um, as, a, as a minister myself, I don't have my own church. But I've gone to a lot of churches, and I say, look, you need me to come in. I need to come to your church when I, we need to talk about this. You know, give me an hour and let me get up on the podium. And let's talk about it. Oh, you, we don't want anything to do with demonology. Uh, they, they, they turn themselves off to that. But here's the sad fact, Chris. Demonology is the study of your enemy. That's what it is. You need to know your enemy. That old saying, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You need to know what your enemies are doing and what their schemes and plans are for you. If you don't, you're just wandering around blindly in the dark. You know, you're open. You're a sitting duck. It's open season on you, buddy. You know? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And what's sad, though, is, is that ladies and gentlemen out here that watches us, they do not believe that. And, and and it's it's amazing that they don't, and I don't understand why they don't. And uh -huh. you know, I say this, Mr. Carroll, every time we talk about good, you have to believe in evil. If you believe in yang, like Mr. Abe says, you have to believe in yang. And uh -huh. it's just it's just amazing. And uh, hello, cryptid. Hello, Abe. Hello, Brenda. Uh, and hello, cryptid and paranormal kingdom. Yes. Uh, hi, Grizzly and Dennis. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Uh, I just got a message. Uh, Abe says, uh, just give them the power and believing in them because it could be a spiritual opening. See, he's right. He's right. And he yeah. has been uh, uh, fighting with that for many years. Years ago, I had a young guy come to me through this. And he said, uh, you know, you know, you know, you're sort of a recognized authority on, on demonology and the occult. He says, I want to learn everything I can. I want to know all about demons. He was just talking about demons, 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 demons. And I said, oh, hold on a minute here. You know, you're taking this the wrong way. Yeah. That's you know, you're, 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 you're infatuated with this. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're dazzled by it. Uh, that's what they're looking for. You don't want to, you've got to take this from a scholarly point of view. You've got to detach yourself from it in some ways. I know you, it's an emotional subject. You know, but you yes. still got to take it professionally and detach yourself or you won't be able to operate correctly with this. You understand? Just like an EMT. If they come up on a scene, you're in a bad car accident and they say, oh, I can't do that. Well, they're not going to help you. You know, they're not there to right. help you. you right. You've got to be professional to that to that extent. So people need to understand you don't want to become fascinated obsessed with this kind of a subject because that's what really gets their attention. You don't want to get their attention in that way, you know. Um, I had a, a preacher tell me one time, many years ago, when I get the attention of a demon, it's going to be to kick him out. That's that's the main thing. You don't, you don't want to communicate with them. You don't want to have a long discussion or sit down and have a philosophical discussion with, with one of them. That's not what it's about. You want to kick them out. You want to get rid of them, just like you want to get termites out of your house or rats, uh, whatever the case may be. That's, to me, why I call them vermin. They are spiritual vermin. You don't want to, you don't want them around you, you know? Right, right. No, totally agree. 
But what's really amazing is that people were like, well, if they don't harm me, then it's okay if they stay here. And I'm like, what? No, uh -huh. that's not what you want. You know, they yeah. will conceal <laughs> themselves and they want to be your friends, allegedly. Uh -huh. And that's not what they really are. Oh, no. Uh, they're your worst enemy in that respect. You know, I've actually had young people. I had a young lady one time. She's not here with us anymore. She uh, took the bad way out. But she was uh, tormented by demons. And when I first met her, her father had actually dedicated her to Satan when she was born. And when I first met her, she told me, she said, I have a demon who was my best friend. Oh, uh, wow. he, would, he would give me anything I wanted. But I told her, yeah, and it will always come with a very, very bad price. Too. That's just the way they operate. And when you run into people like that, uh, you know, Chris, you you feel so sorry for them. You do want to help them. But sometimes people don't want your help. So you can't force that on them. God doesn't force anything on us, you know. Uh, sometimes he lets us get to reach dead ends in our lives because we need to sometimes to right. wake up, you know. But he doesn't force things on us. You know, I said this the other day. I was talking about that. God doesn't want, God wants children, not robots. He's not going to come down here and slap you around and tell you to do something, okay, and make you do it. That's not the way God operates, you know. Uh, he is, he's your father, your heavenly father. He wants everything good for you. He wants you to be, uh, to have a wonderful life. He doesn't want you to, to have anything going wrong if you'll only follow him that way. All right, but, Mr. Carroll, uh, our guest just don't. arrived on scene. Uh, let's welcome uh, M Marie. I had to use my trifocals. Marie, are you there? Are you backstage? And can you hear us? Marie, are you there? Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello, so, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. So introduce yourself and tell us what's going on. Oh, wow. Um, my name's Marie Lajness. Um, I live in South Texas. And I want to say for about two years now, uh, my husband and I have been going through a series of attacks, should I say, um, spiritual attachments. Okay. Uh -huh. um, let's see. I've I've had I've gotten pictures. Um, I've got recordings of them saying very profane things to me, and it seems to be me that they target. Whenever Why my, is your my lights, lights keep me, going in and out? That does that a lot lately. Well, have these, I don't uh, know if it's because of our air conditioner. Uh, but, Marie, have these attacks, uh, have these attacks been uh, against you, other people, or the whole family, or how, how are they focused? Uh, on me. Like I've I've literally had yeah. yeah they're they're all focused on me because uh -huh. my husband doesn't get so anything. Do do you feel like there that you are the focus of the attacks? Yeah, I I feel like uh -huh. they don't want me around. Yeah. Okay. So What's really, you're thing? having more problems. You're having more problems with this than your husband is. Is that right? Um, to an extent, yeah. Um, I believe that uh, my husband has an attachment uh -huh. because he has not been himself lately. He's been very distant I'm with me. You, Sometimes he gets really mean. I want to tell you something strange here, okay? Uh, the demonic oftentimes see people that are married or in relationships as one. They, you know, they become one, uh, so to speak, you know, in their relationship and the demonic see that as well it kind of it kind of recognizes that and it usually well, if it attacks the wife it will attack the husband sometimes and vice versa but there is one person usually in the focus of these you know the, the main target the bullseye of the target and that sounds like it might be you i i believe so and i don't know if part of it has to do with the abilities that i have um i am a very sensitive empath um I'm a medium. I have a lot more abilities that are starting to uh, pop up every day. Uh -huh. um, 
I'm still I'm still learning. There's a lot that I don't know. There's a lot that I don't understand. So, so you have the, that uh, makes me more of a target. Yeah, you have psychic gifts. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, uh, something that goes along with those gifts, and that is the fact that you are a sensitive person. Uh, your, your sensitivity is heightened, okay, by these gifts and also the fact that you are a, that you're a woman, okay. Women are sometimes the focus of this, too, because they're very sensitive to these things. And the demonic tends to seek people out like that, especially trying to get their attention. The more sensitive you are. You know, and I've had a lot of people come to me and say, oh, I don't want that. I can't, well, I'm sorry, but if you're made that way, that's just the way it's going to be. You've got to learn to deal with it, but you can deal with it with yourself being right. in control. You know what I'm saying? Right. So when did your right, life yeah. start I still have to, to, to learn how to do that. On? Did you hear me on that question? Um, yeah, the, about the lights. Yeah, so when did that start happening? Okay, well, let me um, tell you. Let me tell you. It's always. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something quite quick, Marie. Don't pay any attention to the lights, okay? They're just that trying to. Correct. They're just, yeah, they're trying to spook you here. Don't don't let don't let that bother you. What you want to do is is kind of ignore that, okay? Go ahead and and answer, Chris. Yeah. So how long has that been it's going been on? It's always kind of been a thing because there's been problems in this house before my husband and I even moved in here. We stay with his um, stepmom and his, and his dad, but it's gotten a lot worse. I want to say in the past couple few months, like when I really started to, to, to feel my gifts and uh, especially when my energy like builds up, I'll notice that they'll flicker a lot more. Or if I sense well, have you, something uh, not right, or I sense something around. Have you in the past uh, used uh, Ouija boards or performed any kind of witchcraft or anything like that in your um, past? I messed with a Ouija board one time, and it was back when I was pregnant with my son. So it was back in 2003. And I do believe that was the biggest mistake that I ever could have made because we were very ignorant to to the right. um, the dangers of it, and yeah. I had problems ever since because we didn't close the board out. Have you ever oh. gone ghost hunting? Do you uh, do you go ghost hunting too? By the way, have you ever done that? Uh, yes, I'm actually um, a certified paranormal investigator. I noticed the light frequency is increasing faster and faster as we talk that's just a note now when has the scarring the scratching and bruising start to occur um i've been going through that for about a little over a year now and how long does those that, last that part then? of it actually has affected my husband um we started to notice um weird scratches on his back and as they would set in even more they were actually letters or some kind of uh, symbol that he would have on his back uh -huh. that and is a mark yeah know, uh, that they do tend to do that they do tend to mark and how about the scratches are usually three scratches uh that's a sim you know sort of a symbolic thing to them uh that kind of thing but let me, uh, I want to ask you another question right quick. Uh, are you uh, religious? Do you do you believe in God and stuff like that? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm okay, that's I've good. I've been baptized, so yeah. Okay. Well, you do know that uh, uh, the power that is God is far greater than any of this, okay? Well, you've got, you need to realize that, and you need, that's, that's the hook you need to grab there, okay? And keep that, hold it close, because you're going to need that. Because when you come up against these kinds of forces, Marie, faith is the weapon, okay? Faith is the weapon. You and your husband both have got to agree on that. But I want to talk to you about something that you need to look at. 
I, when I go to a house, if I could, if I were to come to your house tonight, and I wish I could, I really do. Um, if I were to come to your house tonight, I would stop at your door and ask you, do I have your permission to be to come in, to be invited in? And I do that for a reason, because I have to have authority there. Okay, if you give me permission to come in, then you grant me that authority. And when you deal with the demonic, it's all about authority, okay? You and your husband both, being the leaders of your family, are going to have to take authority over this, okay? God gives us that authority. This is God-given authority. You've got to claim that authority and use that authority starting right now against these forces. Or they will try to overwhelm you. I want to tell you this, and I've talked to people all over the world, okay? I've counseled them on these kind of problems. You must understand that the demonic is feeding off of your negativity, your fear, your anti-faith, if you want to call it that. It's feeding off of that. Don't feed this beast. Starve it. Don't give it that, because the more you give it, the stronger it will become. And you don't want that. You want to fight this thing back. And this is an act of faith on your part by ignoring this, by pushing it away and say, you're not going to frighten me. You're not going to scare me. You're not going to push me out of this house because I have authority here. I have authority over you. I have authority over this house and this place and my body. I have authority. You've got to claim that authority and you've got to believe it and receive it. Okay. It's just that simple, okay. and that will give you the power and weapon against this stuff, okay? They're just trying to spook you, Marie. They're trying, the more they can feed off of that, the more they love it. It's like the kid with candy, and you've got to get that in your mind. Right. That if you let this negativity go on, it's going to eat you up, and that's what they want, okay? So what you and your husband are going to do is have to starting right now. It's to change your attitude about this, okay? You need to pray together. You really need to pray together and say, we're going to take authority over this, this situation, this house, and our lives. In the name of God, we're going to take that authority, and we're going to use it against these things. Now, I want to tell you this. Don't get caught up with the lights flickering. Don't get caught up with the scratches. Don't let all of that bother you, okay? Because that's just part of their repertoire, that's the way they yeah, operate. They want to get you. I really don't let it bother me. I've, I've gotten so used to it that um, there's only been one time where, where I broke down, and that was last weekend. And that's been the only time where I've showed weakness. I've, mm -hmm. I've been rather strong throughout this whole thing. Cause I know that they feed into that. That's, that's their fuel. That's their food. Well, let me ask you another question. Do you feel that your power, your psychic abilities come from God? Yes, I know they You do. feel that these are gifts from God. Well, then you can ask God to give you power with those gifts, okay? That those gifts can help you out too, okay? Because that's part of you that you can't ignore. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Uh, that's another part of the whole thing. But you've got to understand. You've got to claim this authority. Believe and receive this authority like a gift. Like if I were to walk up and give you a a gift. You would take it. You take the gift. Claim this authority over these things and tell them to get out of your house. Very loudly stand in the middle of your house and speak to these things and say, I know who you are. I know what you are. I know why you're here. And you've got to leave because I have God-given authority here. And you, if you'll make this statement plain to them and keep that going with that, let this mind attitude get in about what you're doing. You've got the power over this, okay? They are spiritual bullies. They're just going to kick sand in your face if you let them. Don't do that. You don't have to take any of this off of them, Marie. You and your husband, nothing, none of this has to go on. You can stop it. You have that within your power. It's called faith, Okay. And you've got to get that. Now is the time for you to step up with an act of faith and just face these things and say, hey, I'm not going to take this. I'm a child of God, 
I don't have to take this, okay? And confront these forces and begin to push back against them. Okay, because if you fight them, they don't like that. Remember what the Bible says. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what you've got to start doing here. Little by little, resist, 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 rebuke, rebuke, rebuke. That's what it's all about. And that's how you drive this darkness out. Okay? Now, we're not going to worry about the symptoms of what's going on. We're going to worry about the problem of taking care of the problem, okay? And that's what you need to do. Don't worry about what the light's flickering, the noise is, the scratch. Don't worry about that. Now, God is able above and above, beyond able to help you with this problem. you just got to turn to him now and do that because these things are just trying to spook you. They're trying to create that negativity and fear. Don't give in to them, okay? Fight them. Now is the time for true spiritual warfare to begin because this is the battle for your very lives. You understand that, don't you? The very lives of happiness that you want. This is the battle for it. And God is the one that can secure that for you. Okay? And don't don't worry about the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is all powerful against these things. They hate it. Use it. That's what it's for. You can do this. You just got to believe. Believe and receive. That's all you need to do. Okay? Now, Marie, uh, Maria, did you watch my lecture at all that I did? Oh, the one on YouTube? Yes, that is correct. Um, I watched half of it, and then my phone froze, and I couldn't get back into it. My internet's been, like, wacky. No, well, that happens. Earlier. Anytime you deal with <laughs> spiritual, I always hear that. Did any of it make sense, though? Um, yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do for you. And ladies and gentlemen, I usually don't do this, uh, but I know that she has faith, and she expressed that her husband has, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of faith. Uh, I'm going to put a kit together. And I'm going to mail it out priority tomorrow. Uh, so uh, message me your address. Uh, the only thing I ask you to do is whenever you have a chance, just cover the cost of the shipping and the material. That's it. I'm not making money off of you. And uh, I'll ship it out first thing tomorrow. And uh, when you get it, you call me and I'll walk you through it. There will be holy water in there, okay. stuff to... Uh, put around four corners of your home to bury. Uh, there'll be a couple of crucifixes in there, uh, some other material, uh, and there's some prayers that we would have to do out loud together. And, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll tell you ahead. something else we, we want to do too, Chris. We're going to pray with you right now, okay? Yes. And we're going to be, and right now, beginning right here now, we're going to start rebuking these things for you, Okay. And we need you to pray with us. We need you to believe with us. I would like you to even, if you can, touch the screen of what you're seeing us on right now. And then we're going to we're gonna pray with you. We're going to pray for you. But we want you to pray with us, okay? Like I say, now is again time for you to turn this corner and start believing that you have the authority and the power over these things. Because Jesus Christ. So let's start. Let's pray now. I want you to put your hand on the screen and, and, and pray along with me, okay? Oh, Lord God Almighty, creator of the universe, our Heavenly Father, we ask you now humbly in the name of the one name that is given all power on heaven and earth, the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you now put his blood upon this situation, that you now put your power here, with this family, we ask that you safeguard them. We ask that you put a hedge around them, maintained by faith. That your shield, your shining shield now, will encompass this house, this family, and the person here tonight. We ask you, Lord, that you seal them with your power. And with the help of your holy angels, we ask that you guard them from this time forward. And we say this, Lord, we know your word. The power of your word 
is true. You do not tell lies. You have promised us, and you are more than able to keep those promises. And you have said that you will give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. We now stand upon that promise, Lord. And you have also told us that whatsoever we shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And I now, in the name of Jesus Christ, loose your power, your peace, and your protection over this family right now. That you heal them spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. That you guard them and guide them through this situation right now. We ask that the power of the Holy Spirit be loosed upon this situation. And we bind the power of the enemy, the power of the darkness that is here. We bind these spirits in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know you are able to do this. And we rebuke these things now in your name, Lord. We rebuke them and we send them out. We send them away from this, and we put a hedge and a guard around these people that these forces cannot come back and bother them. We rebuke them now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask this humbly in your name, Lord, knowing full well that you can do this. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 That's good. That, I felt good about that. I have a sort of a peaceful feeling there. I believe that you're gonna that, that you're gonna be delivered from this very very soon. I believe that I believe deliverance for you began here tonight. Okay. Yeah, uh, Maria, make sure to send me your address. I'm a messenger that I've been contacting you on. I'll get that kit out first thing in the morning. Uh, don't worry about paying for anything. Uh, just pay for okay. it whenever. Uh, like I said, I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about what's going on. So, uh, but if you need anything, uh, Dennis and I are here. Uh, I can't, I gave you all my cell phone number so you can text me throughout the night, throughout the day, or even call me. Okay. Does that sound good you're to not, you? Just remember you're not alone in this battle, Marie. Okay. That sounds great. Okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay, Marie, or a little bit later tonight. And I really appreciate you coming on so we can speak to you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, talk to you Take soon. Take care. All right, bye-bye. Okay. You know what, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is, you know, the real deal. And people don't realize, Mr. Carroll, that this is not a joke. No. It, it really is not. And when she first reached out to me, uh, she was actually uh, reached out to participate in a missing persons case. And uh, the activity has gotten so bad, she basically told everybody, uh, due to whatever, that I have to back out. And I knew there was more to the story. You know, I mean, with my law uh -huh. enforcement experience, I knew there was more. And she actually personally messaged me and explained to me. I'm like, oh, my Lord. Okay, yeah, this is what we need to do. And then she had the audacity that somebody, did you did you see that clip that she sent me that somebody come in? I was like, hey, and did a blessing for 70 bucks that were just making just garbly, googly stuff. Uh, and rip her off. I mean, uh -huh. that pisses me off. That that well, is so I... wrong that people take advantage of people. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is, and uh, I agree with that. And you know, uh, this, this, all this kind of stuff is happening more and more frequently, Chris. Uh, it, uh, you know, I, I told this to somebody the other day, and I'm not trying to be flippant about it, but it's almost as if the demonic is punching an overtime card here. You know, uh, this is ramping it up worse and worse as time goes on. Uh, you see this happening more and more. And uh, these personal attacks, not just the, I call the, uh, the, the attacks of our civilization, but the personal attacks. And when it gets personal, like what's going on with this lady, that's real spiritual warfare, okay? Yes. When it gets personal, 
that's what it, that's what's going on, you know. And um, you can't take it from these things. I was watching those lights going off and on. And that's just part of their little plan. That's the, the plan I'm going to talk about tonight. That's all part of what they do. That's how they operate. Don't let that spook you. Because well, that's what Carroll, they want to do. We got a message just in from Spiritual and Cryptid Encounters. My lights in my room started flickering through the prayer. See what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's not good. They're trying to spook you. But don't let that bother you. Like I said, as children of God, we have power over these things. We have the authority. We just need to take it. We need to, that, that is not the faith. Faith without works is dead, okay? That's what the enemy wants. They want to kill your faith. Don't don't let them do that. Take that authority. Move and operate with that authority. God wants you. God gives you. Jesus said, I gave, I give you the power over all the enemy. Then nothing by any means shall harm you. That's a very strong promise. And like I said with the, in that prayer, we stand on the promises of God because God does not lie. God tells us, and he keeps his promises, you know? We're not, well, he's not human like we are. <laughs> we, you know, we mess up. Well, and like, and like we talked about last show, it says in the Bible, fact checkers, you can check Grizzly out, no problem. It says, fear not, over 365 times, I think. Uh, quote me, fact check me, and there's a reason behind that. So I'm going to send her uh, a kit that should help her. And uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying that this is a fix-all. It can make things a whole lot worse. Uh, even Mr. Carroll and I even said she may have to get a, a, a clergyman in there. Uh, or somebody, uh, sometimes you dabble in it, and and they will fight back. And that's yeah. something you have to understand. Just because you have holy water or crucifix, that is not going to be your total answer. Because they always ask me, well, how do I know if it's fixed? Well, you don't know unless you have no activity forever. Well, that's so, like I said last, uh, on our last episode, Chris. Uh, people think, uh, thanks to Hollywood, that you can go in and form about 30 minute exorcism and walk out and everything is hunky dory. It don't right, work that way. Right. It don't work that way. I wish it did, but it don't work that way. Sometimes exorcisms have to go on for months, especially right. weeks for sure. Uh, the enemy is strong. You have to constantly push him back. You got to constantly fight him. But God is able to do that for you. You know, I know you get tired and you get weary sometimes. And, you, and but you can't let that but stop you. You know, God is your your refuge and your strength, and you got to go with that. You know. Yes, that is uh, absolutely uh, no. Uh, let's see here. Everybody's wanting to know where she's from. I'm texting her right now. Uh, what part of Texas are you from? Uh, part of Texas. Are you from? But one thing I always try to tell people uh, is that is that for you to do what I send, and I usually do not send anything. Uh, and here's why: is that number one, you got to have a pure heart, and you got to have faith, and without that, it, it, it it's a waste. It, it's not going to work, and that's why uh, Mr. Carol and I said the first thing she needs is a, a, a clergyman or somebody really, and, really, cut from yeah. the cloth. Uh, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's very important. Uh, now her and husband, that is part, uh, that's part of the job of the clergy. Some of them don't want to do that it anymore. Correct. But that that's part correct. of the job. That's, actually, it's the job of every Christian, but that we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But actually that that's the commission that was given to us by Christ. Okay. It was a commission. It's part of the job. Well, the cast out then, equal spirits. I don't know. I got my glasses on. I don't know which drawer I have them in, but I know I've got them somewhere. So in in the kit, uh, if she's watching, you'll get certain crucifixes uh, that have been blessed. And of course, uh, another good it. thing, uh, Chris, you might want to send her a prayer cloth. Uh, actually, those I'm are, those are very, very effective because she can carry that, you know, in her pocket or whatever. 
uh, it's very effective. I'm actually out of that. Uh, but also, she don't need a 45. She don't need another 45. Hold on here, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me. I just moved to set my studio back up. And nothing is in the right spot. So, hold on here. Keep talking, Mr. Carl. I'll find it. Or find no, me. Right. I, I just, uh, I'm just sitting here wishing I could wish I could go to her house. Definitely. Uh you know, oh, I've had you and I both. a lot of cases like that, and it's frustrating not to be able to go there. You know what I'm saying? We, we could get on a jet and fly over there. We've got to... <laughs> Okay, so, all right, let's see here. I found them. So I have special things that, uh, that are specially blessed, and uh, and what we do with these, we bury them on the four corners of the houses oh, once, yeah. once we do the blessings inside and then we seal the deal hold on i'm trying to open my baggies and of course i can't i never can do stuff on 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 action right um but i want to show with everybody what they are i got different ones so these are miniature crosses oh. Yeah. That we yeah. bury at the four corners of the houses, okay? And we have to say certain prayers as we do it, okay? We just don't bury yeah. them. Then after that... And of course, you, uh, you use the seesaw in every corner. Yes. Every every cupboard, every closet. Attic and basement, correct. if there is one. Everywhere. And this cast the salt. Yeah. is oh, yeah, a medallion the okay. for exorcism. That's a Saint Benedict, isn't it? Not yes, that is correct. And we place that on the opposite four corners where you bear the crosses, okay? So that will be also in the kit, not only with the holy water and another crucifix and other materials. So uh, only thing I ever make sure you, uh, you make sure that, uh, that she knows that sea salt. Sea salt is what yes. you use, you know? Yes. Yeah, use the table and, salt. Uh, but the whole, yeah, yeah, people do not use table salt. That's iodine salt. Uh, That's totally do. different. Yeah, it's not real. So. <laughs> no. So uh, what what I send out, uh, I don't make money off of. Uh, I very rarely do it because, like I said, you got to be pure at heart, and you got to have faith. Uh, without those two, what I send you will not work. Okay. But uh, we've talked. She's very spiritual. Her husband's very spiritual. That's uh, good. Now, anointing oil, uh, I do not send out because what I have is so expensive. Let me see if I can reach through my stick here. Really, the back. anointing, uh, the anointing oil should be placed on the laying, the, the laying on of hands thing. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. What you got there? Oh, okay. Anointing oil. Now that's yeah. actually from Jerusalem. It's not virgin olive oil or anything like that. Uh, if you're going to buy anything offline, I always recommend, uh, was it Lourdes or Lords? Mm -hmm. There's one of, I think it's Lords. Or you can go to your local Catholic church, and uh, even though you're not Catholic, they will provide you with holy water and so forth. Uh, trust me, because I'm not Catholic. So. I know, but, I'll ask you this question here from uh, Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. Uh, if she uh, rebukes these things, and takes that authority, and that should cut all those ties with that Ouija board. Unless she, of course, she. I hope she still doesn't have the board. I don't think she does. This was something that used many years ago, I think. But that would definitely cut the ties to that. Um, now, if there were any kind of de demonic invitations or or contracts or whatever, that's a different matter. Uh, but I think this main Ouija board use that would, if she takes that authority rebukes these things, and, and moves with faith against these things. That should cut the Ouija board ties, hopefully. You know. And that's a sad thing, ladies and gentlemen, because we don't know. Like I said, sometimes it can make things, the activity worse. It can increase before it gets better. I mean, yeah. cause some of these evil entities or demonic spirits, however you want to call them, if you want to believe them or not, the, hey, man, that's, that's up to you. I mean... But you know, uh, people got to understand. The, the, the people, fish, uh, people need to understand, Chris. Uh, when you fight the enemy, he's gonna fight you back. Okay, 
uh, you gotta you gotta realize that, uh, and that's why I said a lot of times. And here's another thing that she and her husband do: if you do talk with her anymore, that if they have a plan, a game plan against this, they don't need to discuss it at that house. They need to go somewhere a different location and make their plans. You don't do that where the enemy is, okay? Because the enemy is listening. Oh, absolutely! Uh, that is totally yeah. true. And ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mr. Carroll has how many years experience? How many years experience you have dealing with this stuff? Uh, 50, 55 plus years so far. Okay. So I'm actually following in his footsteps. Him and I are the same. We believe in the same. We're actually uh, in the same footstep, or I rephrase that. I'm in the same footsteps as him. And this is why we chose to do a show together is because nobody is talking about this stuff and it's very important. And what he says is the truth. And, and I know it is because I have taken the classes and it's still fresh in my mind. Uh, I had to learn a lot and I'm still learning, you know, and you're always going to learn. Well, you but, always get, yeah. you, you know, learn. You can either take what we say and be like, great, or you can let it go in one out to air the other, or you can say BS and throw it up in the air and say you're all scammers. What? Do what you want. You're not going to hurt my feelings. But let me tell and you this something. Is, uh, this Chris is like, uh, like all the fields of the paranormal. There are no real experts in none of this, okay? That is correct. People need to realize that. There are no real experts. We're all learning as we go along. And the more we do, the more we learn. But um, some of us just had a little more experience than others. That doesn't make us experts, but uh, there are no experts here, okay? We got so to, we got she to lives that. in San Diego, Texas. San Diego was in Texas. Sorry for my late response. My husband fell, and I had to tend to him. My husband fell, and I had to tend to him. See what I'm saying? So they really got something going on. So San Diego, everybody in Texas. I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, this is the first time. Like I say, it's, uh, it's so frustrating that you can't go there, you know, and uh, do yeah, what needs to be done. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I could just jump in the car and, and just head down there. Uh, well, that's, you know, uh, what we talked about last episode. It's so important that we all become one in these kind of situations like this, that we support each other and that we, uh, as, a, as a congregation, as a family, as fellow Christians, we need to support each other in these things and endeavors because there's number, the numbers are strength, okay? There's strength in numbers. And that's what it's all about, you know. It it really is, and you know, you see on Facebook all the time. People ask, "All right, prayer roars. I need, I need your prayers. Do it, because yeah. the more prayers you have, you know, God will listen, and God can hear everything that you're praying for. Now, God does not answer every prayer on your terms." It's his terms. You have to understand that, ladies and gentlemen. But the spiritual well, here, uh, warfare, go ahead, here, here's Mr. Carroll. Here's, here's what I told somebody, Chris, okay? I believe in the power of prayer because God's on the other end, okay? That is correct. That is correct. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, lots of activity in South Texas, lots of limestone that attracts paranormal activity. Yes, I do believe in that, uh, especially on the paranormal side. Uh, San Antonio, uh, no. Uh, what did I say she lived? Y'all got me even forgetting. Uh, she lives in San Diego, San Diego, Texas. Uh, she says that uh, her husband was getting laundry off the clothesline and a shoelace caught in the grill of the steps because they're metal and he fell. Now, I'm not saying that's a coincidence, okay? Accidents do happen. I mean, you know, I'm clumsy, you know? But when you're dealing with stuff over and over, there are signs of dynamic presence. Uh, face hit the corner of the step rail. Wow. 
So he's actually injured, Mr. Carroll. He's mm-hmm. actually physically injured. Uh, so, yes. Uh, that's bad when it goes to that, Chris. It's always a heightened activity uh, when you go physical energy. When it gets physical, it's, it's dangerous, definitely. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever feel embarrassed to come on the show and tell us. That's what we're here for. I've uh, been watching from the shadows, LOL. Uh, William Nighthawk, welcome. Yeah. Uh, Brenda, I never heard of that place in Texas. I haven't either. Uh, try to Google it and let me know what you find out. Uh, maybe I read it house. wrong. Is a it a small, small town? In Texas. Yeah. yeah, well, that is Probably. true. That is true. Uh, uh, but Brenda, she's one of my psychics that were on the panel for this Friday show coming up with true crimes, uh, following up on that missing, uh, persons case that we're working on. So, and she had to uh, gracefully bow out. Uh, another psychic had to uh, personally message me and say, look, I don't know what in the hell you all working on, but the last case I passed out and it had to be taken to the emergency room. And I do not want nothing to do with any murder cases, uh, any paranormal cases. Uh, it really screwed my body up. And, you know, it is what it is. And I'm not going to say, uh, somebody says it's close to Corpus Christi. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, my daughter was just down there. Uh, William Nighthawk Nye- says, Nemark always looks uh, for openings to get to people. That is correct. That's very uh, true. Brenda says, okay, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Spiritual Encrypted Encounter says, four hours away from where I live. Uh, so she's got some very serious stuff going on and this is not make believe, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I don't know her from a, from Adam. Uh, she's the one that reached out to me and canceled her appearance on my other show. And she's the one who's like, Hey, this is what's going on in my life. And I'm like, she had no idea I was a reverend. She had no idea. We had another show with Mr. Carroll. And I was explaining to her what we do and all that other stuff. She's like, oh, my God, really? And then she felt comfortable enough to open all the way up. And first thing I did was got a hold of Mr. Carroll. And I was like, listen to this. And I was like, we got a case. I I start forwarding messages, forwarding her voice messages, didn't I? Yeah. So, you know, Mr. Carroll's like, hey, this is nothing new to me. You know, it's like. You got to be thorough. You, you, you really do. Yeah, yeah. You really do. But you so. know, uh, you know, I've seen many cases like this. Some worse than this. Some not so bad. But uh, you never know what you're going into. Uh, you know, that's just part of the game. Unfortunately, uh, you know, you don't know what you're up against. But these can be very powerful sometimes. And uh, and like I say, when we end the show tonight, we'll definitely. Uh, end it with a prayer of protection for everyone listening tonight, okay? Because we don't want these dark forces spreading around and touching people, you know, when they shouldn't. Well, you know what's really strange? Um, and I'm not trying to spook anybody or saying that something's going on, but, you know, I'm very tight with security on my computer and my Facebook. Uh, all of a sudden, I've been getting, like, these pop-ups out of nowhere like all these ads and stuff. So um, I don't know what that well, means. Uh, my friend, uh, my friend, William Nighthawk and I do a show, several paranormal shows, and we have a lot of interference with that. We, we kind of, I'm kind of happy in a way to see that, Chris, because that means we're getting close to the truth. They don't like it. Uh, you will have some interference. Uh, and matter of fact, before I came on the show tonight, I said a prayer. That would give us, uh, you know, the ability to help people and to get the message out, to do the will of God, and that this be a good broadcast and everything, you know. Uh, you got to do that. You got to go protect yourself going in, and you got to protect yourself going out. That's the way that goes. Well, Mr. Carroll, you're absolutely right, because on one of my live shows, uh, I was in the middle of broadcasting uh, for the ones that were, was not watching. Mr. Carroll does not know this. But uh, you see my backdrops. I have many different backdrops for many different shows. I do a lot of different shows, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking a lot, right? And uh, 
whoever just messaged me, bear with me. I'll look at it in a minute. And uh, I sit there and I'm watching myself speaking and the backdrop lifts up in the air and it is tossed, like, get out of my way. It freaks me out on the air. I stand up and I'm like, ah! And I stand up and when I stand up, my spiritual books in my dynamic book start flying off the shelf. I kill my feet immediately. They were like, Whoa, what's going on with Grizzly over there? Is Grizzly okay? And I'm like freaking out. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm throwing holy water everywhere. I'm rebuking. I'm saying my prayers. And it just like stops. And I'm that's like. A, that's, a, that's a kind of in your face attack here, Chris. Definitely. Uh, let me tell you something, Mr. Carroll. I'm 48 years old. And I'll be telling you, Brenda, watch it, uh, didn't you, Brenda? And uh, I about wet myself. Uh, thank goodness I went to the bathroom uh, before the show. Because if not, uh, I would have to take a shower and clean myself. Uh, I was not prepared for any of that. And ladies and gentlemen, when you are talking about spiritual stuff and you're trying to inform and advise people, of what's going on, they will interject somehow. Uh, it freaked a lot of people out. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the show, I uh, changed my voice. It was actually on my soundboard. So I was not being possessed. Uh, I do apologize because a lot of people like freaked out and where they were saying prayers, they were sending me messages. Oh my God, did you hear your voice? That was actually me. Uh, I can change my voice each time. Then I can go. Then I can go on and on. But I can go on and on with that. So, yeah, I mean, it was just sound effects. It was not being me being taken over or anything. So, I mean, it, it actually freaked a lot of people out. So I do apologize about that. Uh, I love my soundboard. I love my sound effects. So, yes. Uh, Mr. Carroll, I think we're on the right track. I think we're doing a lot of good things. Uh, I think we have a lot more to do, uh, uh, a whole lot more to do. And I want people to chime in. Uh, Spiritual Encrypted Encounter says, Brothers, she is being demonically attacked and manifested in front of me, and my lights flickered. We tied, blind, and rebuked it in the name of Jesus Christ's name. That's absolutely the way you need to do yep. it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You, you know, the Bible tells us that we need to knock down the strongholds of the enemy. We need to bind the strong man. That's what that's all about. And uh, that's why I was saying it in the prayer. You know, what you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. What's bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Uh, that's a very important promise that God has given us. Uh, you know, there's a saying, as on earth, uh, you know, as above, so below, as on, as in heaven, so on earth. Uh, that's the way that goes. And we have to claim that authority. That's another promise. You know, those promises, I call them the red threads that run through the word of God. Those promises you can take to the bank, okay, because they're real. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when when it's written as a promise, that is something that you can take to the bank and cash it, ladies and gentlemen. It is nothing just to be tossed around as words like we talked about today. Oh, well, Grizzly said, you know, you can take that to the bank and cash it. No, I'm literally saying when it's written that way, it is the gospel. It is in stone. I mean, God backs it up. And like you said, Chris, this is not make-believe. This is not entertainment. This is a real thing. This is uh, serious stuff. You don't play around with this. Uh, this is, uh, you know, what God has put forth for us to do. Uh, it's not for entertainment and all that. That's not what we're here doing here tonight. We're actually no, trying to help No, absolutely not. Yes. We're, we, we want to help people. That's what it's all about. You want, if somebody comes, if, if, if you see somebody walking toward a, a, a hundred foot cliff, blindfolded, you want to stop that person, don't you? I hope you do. I well, mean, yeah. you don't want that to happen. You want to help, you know? Uh, and that's the same situation you got here in some ways. Uh, somebody needs help. That's why I went into this business 55 plus years ago. 
help people. You know, I would want somebody to help me. Uh, she just texted me and said, thank you so much. Your help is appreciated more than anything. I've prayed a lot these past couple of months for help for someone who is genuine and honest and who is faith-driven when actually help and try not to hurt me or my husband or more. You know what? That That is terrible because that tells me not only did the person that take her money, you know what I'm saying, to come in. And ladies and gentlemen, let me if you, you could have listened please. to that video, I mean, did did they or not, Mr. Carroll, light up candles and blow some incense and be like, and I'm like, and you paid how much? Nah. I'm going to tell you something, Chris. 55 plus years in the business. I've never actually charged anybody for anything like that, okay? That, that includes spiritual research. That includes the demonic. And yeah, I've never put forth a fee. I say, you're going to have to pay me this. I don't, it's not in it for the money. It's not about the money. You know, uh, how can you say, well, let's see now, I cast out three demons, that will be $30 a piece or something. I mean, come on. That's a business. You know, that uh, reminds me of the, what Jesus did with the money changers in the temple. He drove them out. It was all about the money. And that's what this is uh, definitely not about, the money. Uh, and, and these people going around charging for this thing. Now, I've had people give me donations, okay? They say, here's the money for your gas or something. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But to actually charge a fee and say, you've got to pay this much for this, that's wrong. I just don't see that as right in any way, you know? No, and I don't either. Ladies and gentlemen, I got my GoFundMe account up. And what that GoFundMe account uh, goes to is for advertisements. It goes to software updates. It goes to uh, computer equipment. Uh, it's not to fund my pockets or Mr. Carroll's pockets. I mean, my equipment is very expensive. Uh, I got backup equipment to where I can go and broadcast live uh, with no power. And it also will give me money to where I can travel to people's homes and stay in motels if I need to, if, if I cannot stay in their homes forever. Or well, everything, reason. every endeavor, Chris, is going to have an overhead there, you know? Yes, That's just absolutely. the way it goes in this world. That's the way it goes, unfortunately. Well, I don't want people to think, oh, God, you know, somebody's asking for money, you know? I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I just spent over $375 a day just on studio equipment that you don't even realize what it takes to even run a studio. It, you know, it's not just a microphone, a boom mic, and, and a computer. I mean, I've got sound boards. I've got, you know, uh, uh, background. And, and the, the most Go valuable ahead. thing of all, Chris, is your time. You can't get yes. that thing. No money can pay for it. You know, and, you and, put and a lot I, of time. And I never yeah. charge for my time. You know, my I never do. I never charge for my time. And I always mm -hmm. tell people is that whatever I send you, just cover the cost of my expense of the merchandise. That's the only thing I ask. Uh, now, we got a thing from Cryptid and Paranormal Kingdom. South Texas is a hot spot for paranormal. Uh, yep. Never I charge money it. for the work of God. Yes, I do believe in that. Absolutely. And, that, and that's why I said, you know, whatever I send, just cover the cost. Cover the cost of that and the postage. Uh, uh Cryptid Paranormal Kingdom, uh, what intoned Abe? Uh, yeah, what is up, Abe? Uh, I know you got some words to say. Uh, you know, w we're not in this for the money, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, if that's the case, we would charge per show. We would charge a monthly subscription. We don't do none of that crap. So, uh, you know. Well, I've, told, I've said that before about the paranormal, Chris. If I'm in it for the money, boy, am I in the wrong business, you know? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Isn't that That's the truth? Yeah. But I do, I do have to kind of look at some of these guys. I don't get into that tonight that are uh, in the paranormal business for the money. But that's a different story altogether. Well, you know, and I understand that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I mean... And like I said in the last show, I've been offered opportunities in the past before to have my uh, my own TV series with other people and all that other stuff. And once I look at it, 
uh, the head restrictions that you are not able to do your show anymore for three to five years. I'm like, eh, wrong, wrong answer. Or they would have the rights to my name in my shows forever. Wrong answer. Or they would take, you know, the content that we're talking about and change 90% of it to spookify you and make it That's more what I said uh, as, as a writer, Chris, uh, and this has been going on. This is happening today. Uh, some writers are complaining that their works are being changed for the wokeism stuff, you know, and you don't do that. I say this right now, the writer, you don't change what I wrote. Uh, and uh, just like you're doing the show tonight, who will somebody come in and start changing everything around the way you're trying to get it done? That's not right. You know, this is your property. This is your endeavor. And people need to keep their hand off other people's stuff, you know. Um, but I have also, also been offered several television shows myself. But I uh, never could get a, an agreement with them because they didn't want to do it my way, which was trying to be honest about it, you know. Uh, they don't like Some of them don't like that. You know, I can understand where you're coming from on that. No, and, and they don't. And, you know, uh, no disrespect to my lesson. I'm not mentioning any names. Uh, but I do not go back and uh, edit any of my live shows. Uh, I don't take out the ums, the hemes, the dings. Uh, if I don't like what my client or my guests say, I don't go back and edit it. Uh, we are live. We're unedited. And we're uncut. We're raw. And that's the yep. way it should be, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what you hear is what you get. I mean, if I stutter, I stutter. If I don't say a word right, I don't say a word right. I don't. I, it is what it is. I'm human. So, and and that's very important to know because a lot of people will take an episode and take three to four days to edit it, and I'm like, why? Just broadcast it, man. They want to know. That's just my opinion and my thoughts. So, yeah. Uh, cryptid and paranormal kingdom. Uh, I, I, I help people. Uh, I like helping people out to free them from whatever is afflicting them uh, spiritually. That's a Amen. good attitude. That's a good attitude. Yeah. Uh, she lives in San Diego, Texas, uh, near Corpus, Corpus Christi. Okay. Uh, yes, Norma, they do own you. Uh, I found that out. <laughs> and uh cryptid paranormal kingdom oh i know where that is abe yes so yeah uh matter of fact i'm trying to click on something and it's not clicking so it, it's amazing so yeah but it you know and i understand that everybody's got to have ratings okay and and what i tell people when you watch these fishing shows ladies and gentlemen do you think they catch nine fish in an hour Hell no, ladies and gentlemen. They actually take two or three days to catch something, and then they put it in in a one-hour show. And, you know, and, and that's what they do on investigations. They may film for a week and try to get everything down to 47 minutes to make you uh, entertain. In real investigation. Chris, you're sitting in that room for three, four hours, nothing happening, just quietly waiting, watching for something to happen. A lot of times they don't want that. That's not entertainment to them. But that's the real way it's done, you know. You gotta you gotta do the long haul, you know. Uh it's like we used to say in police work, you gotta do the footwork sometimes. You don't get to ride around in the car all the time. You gotta get out and do the footwork. And they don't want that yeah. because it's boring to them. See, they want the highlights and all that. And there's pressure. Here's the thing about it, Chris. There's pressure on these people to perform, even if they have to fake it. Yes, that is correct. That Yeah, to get the ratings, that is correct. And they will fabricate and take a something. And, you know, and this is the best way I could describe it, ladies and gentlemen, is now when you see movies, it says, based on a true story. <laughs> and they're telling you that is because not whatever you're seeing is the whole truth, nothing but the truth, but it's just based off a story. And they're spicing it up to get you to go, ooh, oh, are you serious? So, you know, and you, that's what sells. 
And, you know, and I tell people all the time, hey, man, if you're going on an investigation, uh, I will film it live. And they're like, well, you know, unfortunately, ghosts don't come on live. I'm like, I know that. And we're like, well, we're afraid that I'm like, who cares if nothing happens? You know, they may see something we don't see. Uh, it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we don't want them to think we're fakes. You know what? Then if that's the case, then I don't want to do anything live with you. You know, ghosts do not come out on command. Uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch do not come out when you whistle, okay, or ring your dinner Wish bell. You would. <laughs> Wish me you would. too. Yeah, yeah, I'd be rich, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I told that to somebody one time, Chris. I said, uh, if, if I could make the paranormal perform on it when I wanted to, I would definitely be a very rich man, probably. Uh, but it don't work that way, unfortunately. No, it doesn't. And people actually think it does. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's why. And, and, you know, and, you know, and, and people get disappointed when you tell them not every place you go is going to be haunted. Not everything you do, not every Bigfoot hunt you go to, you're going to see Bigfoot. I'm sorry, but that don't, it just don't go that way, you know. Uh, well, you've got to do the footwork again, you know. You've got to stay in the trenches and keep at it if you ever want to get anywhere with it because it just, it's not something that you can control. Yeah. And, and you cannot, ladies and gentlemen. You know, and one goes... You know, investigators can go into a, a place and it can be active and another group can come right behind them and it would be silently dead for two days. I mean, it's not a switch you can flip on and off. It, it's not. And it happens. And people don't want to realize that. Uh, it, it is what it is. So it's not being their fakes, you know, and that's why, you know, people are like, well, I'm going to go ghost investigation, and if nothing happens, I'm going to provoke them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the wrong thing to do. Trust me. You know, we talked about this on other shows, and they're right, Mr. Carroll. That's true. That's true. And like I say, it's business. It's big business. It's the money. Follow the money, you know, and it'll go anywhere. And so tell me where it'll get or where it comes from. For that matter. As a matter of fact, it goes, it's a two-way street when it comes to money. But that's what it's all about for 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 uh, entertainment, you know. It's all about how much more money we can make off of something. That's the number one job. It is, and, and unfortunately, that's that's the way TV business is. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the way news is. They will report anything they can, uh, whether it's true or not true, to get their ratings over another channel. Uh, you know, if it's wrong information, if it sounds hot and it's fresh and they're the first reported or reporting the agency to report it, they will. And, you know, and it, it's sad. It, it just really is. So, and ladies and gentlemen, my computer's acting up, so I cannot see anybody. Can you all see me? <laughs> Can you see me, Mr. Carroll? Yeah, I see Yep. Okay. You're still Great. With, you're still with us. You're still here. Yep. Okay, because I can't see anybody, so I don't know what's <laughs> going on on my end. Unbelievable. Uh -huh. So, but no, it, it it is true. Now back to our subject. What else did you want to further explain to people? Well, I was going to mention a little bit about the demonic plan tonight. Uh, the demonic plan is is a very simple one. I'm going to quote the Bible. Uh, this is what it says: Hell. Is beneath his mood for thee to meet thee at thy coming and stirreth of the dead for thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground who didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will place my throne above the stars of God. I will rise up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet are thou brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's the plan. The devil wants to take over heaven. Okay, that's his number one plan. He wants to be God. He has stolen this world from God. And he stole it many, many years ago, back 2,000 some odd years ago. You might remember he met Jesus on the mountain. He said, all of this is mine. If you'll fall down, Jesus, and worship me, I'll give it to you. Yep. He's already stolen this world from God. 
Okay, we got to realize that, and we got to operate that way. Okay, we need to know that without a doubt that these things, are the, like your government's not your friend. None of these things are your friend. We've got to realize that this is part of the satanic plan against us. And another part of that satanic plan is to keep us in bondage and to keep us slaves and under the power of his foot, under his heel. That's where he wants us. And we've got to remember that's part of the plan, too. And then the ultimate part of the plan is our destruction. Not only our body destruction, but the destruction of our souls in hell. That's what it comes down to. That's the game plan of a demonic game plan. And there are many ways to accomplish this, and we see it happening around us day after day after day, and everything is more and more and more prevalent as time goes on. You know, the Reverend Billy Graham said many years ago in a book, one of his books, and I used to love to read a lot of his books. He was an excellent writer. He said that the day that you come to see an increase in demonic activity, then you know without a doubt that they realize that their time is running out. And that is definitely true, and that is definitely what's happening in front of our very eyes in this day right now. We can see it going on constantly in the news, the media, everywhere. My studio. Am I back? You're back. You're you're with us again. Okay, I just had to bless my studio with holy water. Oh, okay. So my my studio is wet. Uh, I don't know. No, what happened? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Sorry about that, ladies that, and gentlemen. Go ahead, sir. Well, I was going to tell you the story. There's a very famous story about the preacher was on going to church one uh, once I did the preacher sermon. And he sees this little boy on the side of the road with a birdcage. And he asked the little boy, so what you got there, son? And the little boy says, I got two old mangy old birds here. And he said, well, what you going to do with them birds? He said, well, I'm just going to play with them a while and I'll probably kill them, I guess. And the preacher said, well, I'd like to buy those birds from you, if you don't mind. The little boy said, well, what do you want with these little stupid old birds for? And he said, I want them. Would you pay? Well, sell them to me. And the boy said, yeah, give me $5. I'll give them to you. And he said, oh, here's your $5. Give me the birds. He took the birds on church with him, and he put them up on the pew up there. And he said, you know what, people? God just showed me a lesson. He taught me a lesson. We are the birds in the devil's cage. Okay, but God is the only one that can set us free. And he opened the door on that cage and let those birds fly away. And he said, we got to remember that. That's what the devil wants for us, the bondage of that cage to destroy us eventually. And that's what the demon plan is all about. And that's what you see going on around you right now in the world today. The more power that the government and the media and all that, the more power they get, the more they want to exercise it. They're going to teach you what to eat, what to read, what to drink, what to do, where to go, how to do it, and run your life. Because that is true slavery. You know, people have said to me, and I talked about this with my friend the other day, uh, William Nuttall, slavery is more prevalent in this world today than it has ever been before. But this is an insidious kind of slavery. You don't see the iron chains and shackles. They're invisible, but they're there, and they're stronger than iron. They're put there by these evil forces in this world. It's all part of the plan, the demonic plan. And we've got to realize this plan is in action, and we've got to live our lives with our relationship to God and our relationship to each other in this world Bearing that demonic plan in mind that that's what they're up to. If we can't ever forget it, we've got to play that card on the table and leave it there and always remember it's there because that plan is in action, ever in action against us. And we've got to understand that that is what their final goal is, the destruction of our souls in hell. Here's what Jesus said about Satan. He is the thief that comes but to kill to steal and destroy. Yes. He will steal yes. your dreams and everything you could ever be, the wonderful things you could be in your life, the things you could have in your life. He wants to steal that. And then he wants to kill you physically. 
He'll do that. When he gets you to a certain point, and I've seen it happen with many people, like that poor young lady I mentioned earlier tonight. He gets you at that point, he will kill you. Or have you killed yourself, but it's still the same thing. It's still proxy murder, okay? It's still murder. He'll kill you, but then he wants to destroy you for a soul in hell. That's what Jesus was talking about, to kill, yeah. to steal, and destroy. And that is the demonic plan. And he's now, absolutely right, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that is the truth. That is from the scripture. Yes. But, and here is the thing that will thwart the demonic plan, okay? If we've got to fight that demonic plan, we've got to do it the right way, the correct way, just like the, the problem we're having with that lady. There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything in this universe, okay? Let's do it the right way because it takes a lot less effort, okay? <laughs> when, you have, when you screw up, you don't want to go that route. So, the right way to combat the demonic plan is for you to have your own strong bond with God, that strong relationship to the one who gave his life for you. If you have and foster and keep that relationship strong, none of this plan will be valid against you. Okay? None of it. He said, I gave you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and all, over, all the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall harm you. That's a bold and powerful statement. Like you said earlier, Chris, we can take that to the bank, the spiritual bank, and it's, it's better than gold. It is. It really is. Spiritual and crypto encounter said the same spiritual warfare war is very real. This disembodied dynamic Nephilim are running havoc on people with spiritual openings. And have to true. awaken all of our brothers and say, I mean, that is true. And uh, uh, A will tell you the, the, the same Nephilim thing. Still, the Nephilim are still with us, genetically and spiritually. Yes, they that is true. They are here. They are here and they fight us. They're part of the plan, the demonic plan, too. But no matter how, you know, I could write books on just the demonic plan alone and, and the insidious, this deceivable way they go about doing these things. And we do need to know, we need to understand that. But like I said, like I thought about that, 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 that young guy earlier, we don't want to become obsessed with it. We've got to be detached from what we see. We've got to understand unemotionally and be professional about this plan. We can't admire it because it's not admirable. It is a devious, devilish plan that ends only in ultimate spiritual destruction. That's bad. Think about it, you know. That's a bad place. You know. I had somebody tell me the other day, he said, what kind of a God do you worship that would throw anybody in hell? Wow. I look at him and I say, not one I know of because God doesn't want you to go to hell. You throw your, you put your own self in hell. You make decisions your own self that, that render you to that fate. God doesn't do that. God doesn't want us to go there. That fate was never meant for us. It was made for who? The devil and his angels. That's who it was made for. And that's who will ultimately end up with that fate. But we don't want to cast our lot in with them. We want to fight the demonic plan. We want you to know, be on the right side. What's really interesting is I love that when people come up to me, and, and this is what they say, Mr. Carroll. Well, God loves me. He loves all of his children. Well, let me tell you something. You are right on that because we all are sinners, okay? He loves you as we are. Now, I'm not going to go into debates on whatever topics. I'm not here for that. Whatever you do, whatever you are, what to be is on your own. But let me tell you something. When they come up to me and debate that, you're right. God does love you. We all are his children. But ladies and gentlemen, when you die is when you have to answer for what you do and what you are. Period. Exactly. You know, God Drop is love. God that is, is love. Correct. God is love and, 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 and Satan is hatred. And, and racial prejudice and evil of every kind. That's what he's all about. 
uh, and you see that prevalent in the world. Look how much people hating each other now, more so than I've ever seen in my life, just because of political purposes or, or lifestyles or whatever the case may be. God loves us all unconditionally. But if we reject that love, that puts us at a disadvantage. That puts us on the wrong road, the highway to hell, you might say. It's definitely a broad way. Uh, if we reject that love by rejecting his son who died for us, then we turn our back on God. God can't help us anymore. He can't, he can't help us with our, our life and our spiritual fate because we've already doomed ourselves if we're not careful. So we've got to be very, very careful about how our relationship with God is standing. Okay? God is going to love you. But you know what? When you stand before God one day, excuses are not going to cut it. Okay? I'm sorry. But that no, ain't going to work. You're absolutely right. And one of the things I tell everybody is that, you know, so we're, we're human beings. We're, we're all sinners. I'm sorry. Uh, I need to keep up with everybody's uh, that the end times is not for them or not us. Okay. That's Hold true. That is it true is. So true, Norma. Love wins. Uh, Cryptid Paranormal gives a thumbs up. Uh, spiritual uh, and cryptic counters. The unseen spiritual war, war is very real. The dysphonic dynamic Nephilim is running havoc on people's spiritual openings. We have to awaken our right. brothers and sisters. That is, I, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, I'm sorry I got behind on the topic. Uh, I had computer problems and all that. But but let me, now this is the problem that Jesus and God has with human beings, okay? So you go and you go, and I'm just going to use this for a topic, and you can hate me for it for whatever. So you go out to the bar every Friday night, and you get just plastered. And you go home and you pray to the porcelain lot, gods. And you know what I mean by that, okay? You're hanging over, oh, God, please help me. I'll never do this again. I pray to you, please get me through this, you know? And uh -huh. and you do it over and over and over. Do you think that God or Jesus is going to forgive you for that when you continually do the same thing over and over? I don't know how many Hail Marys and how rosaries you can say. I don't I don't think that because it looks to me, it looks to me Chris, like they're going out of the way to bore God to death. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's look at it that way, you know. Uh but here's here's another thing. You know, Jesus said this in the Bible that men try to force their way into the kingdom of heaven by violence or force. Uh when it, when the kingdom of heaven is a gift. Uh, you know, he said it's a gift that we can't brag about. It, you know, he said we can't brag. Oh, I'm better than you are. I got the gift. You know, uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, it is a free a gift, freely given and freely accepted. But you got to accept it. That's just the way that goes. Uh, like I told that lady earlier, if I give you a gift and you don't take it, then what good is that gift going to do? Right. Uh, right. Absolutely. And, and God gives us the gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ, who paid that price for us on the cross. I know you've heard this a million times, but that's just what it's all about. That is God's plan. Okay. You know, we talked tonight about the demonic plan, but that is God's plan. And God's plan stands forever. It was put together that way, and it prevails. Satan's plan will fail, but God, he will prevail. And that plan will win out. Satan may try to storm heaven one more time. He may try to take the throne of God. But I got bad news for the guy. You're going to fail. You're not going to do it. You're going to lose. And you're going to end up in a bad, bad place. Well, so let's explain, not throw, explain let's to them not throw about, our lot in with him. Let's not throw our lot in with him, you know? Explain to them about the Dracula movie. Remember about the cross? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Explain the, uh, to them about that. Oh, yeah. The uh, the vampire and the cross? Yes, the vampire. Yeah. Uh, that was the vampire hunter that had the cross, and he started up the stairs after the vampire. And the vampire laughed at him. So, <laughs> you got to have faith to use that, you know. And later on in the movie, the vampire came back again. He ran. He turned around when the vampire died. 
And later on in the movie, he comes back and he tries it again. He starts walking up there and the vampire laughs at him again. I told you, you got to have faith to use that. And all of a sudden, the vampire starts back and it because the guy doesn't stop. He keeps going with the cross because he has faith now to back it up. And that's what it's all about. That's the way Satan will be against you, okay? Your enemy does not have to win this battle. You have the power. You have the authority. God gave it to you. It was a gift to you. Embrace that gift and you use it, okay? Because you don't, you can use it and not lose it, okay? Don't lose Amen. it. Use it. Amen. Yes. That is correct. And that's one thing a lot of people do not understand. I'm sorry, I'm getting the, I'm getting her her kit together so I don't forget. But a lot of people don't understand that, and that's what's sad is that uh, spiritual encounters, the unseen spirit ways. Yeah, I already read that one. Uh, the next one is you know, uh, uh, Amen. People, yes, people, Chris, they say, "Oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. I'm not good enough." Not. And I've I've been I've been that way too. We all we all do that. You know. We can kind of start checking there, but so oh, I'm not good enough to do that. But that's not that's not true. You are because God fixed it for you. Okay, <laughs> He fixed it for you. That's the gift. That's what the gift is about. The gift with Jesus. He fixed that for you. You know, Jesus is your mediator. He stands between you and the devil if you let him. If you try to take the devil on yourself, you got a bad problem. Okay. But you got a mediator. you got help. And God calls it an ever-present help. He said, if you'll just call me, I'll be there. How much how much more plainer can you get than that, you know? Yeah, I mean, how, how else can you how else can you be? And, and that's the problem. You know, ladies and gentlemen, some of the movies you watch on TV has got some merit to it. They're telling you the true story. But, yes, I know, ladies and gentlemen, the book is not complete. I know there's missing chapters out of the Bible, missing books. But, you know, if, if you look at the totality, and this is where the law enforcement uh, comes out, is if you look at the totality, that means everything as a whole, uh, it still makes sense, even though that man only wants to teach you certain things back in the 4th century as the Romans. But when God says he makes promises and he will deliver, he will. Okay. You know, Satan is real. Demonic entities are real. A lot of people and psychics that I know do not like to talk about it because, oh, that's mojo. That's e I don't want to talk about that. But we're here to educate you on the good as well and also let you know what could happen with the bad side. This is not about talking about the devil every show. We're here to educate you all, and it's very important. Just like the Maria coming on the show, and I'm surprised she actually came on live and said it. Uh, a lot of people would not show her their face and even say on live show I what they're going desperate. through. I think she's uh, desperate. No, she's, she's very, happy. yeah, she's very desperate. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. So... But, you know, yeah. uh, Chris, I said this to people in some of my lectures. You know, the devil is real, okay? The devil is real, but God is more real than the devil, okay? Don't forget that. Yes, that is the truth. That is the truth. And I don't think people understand that. You know, I think people fear more of the devil than, than they have faith in God. Does that make sense, Mr. Carroll? It does. That does. That does make sense. And I've seen that in action. Yeah. And that's what they want. That's what the demonic forces want. They want you to be scared. They want you to shake in your boots. They want you to desert God. When the help, the only really help you got is God. The really true spiritual help. I know we can try to help people. We can try to bolster them up. We can try to hold them and stand with them. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. God wants us to do that. But the true help is God. You can't go on alone. You can't do it by yourself. And if these satanic forces can draw you away from God, that's exactly what they want. That's another part of that demonic plan. They get you scared, frustrated, hopeless, so that you will turn from God. And they can destroy you. That's what it's all about. It's a very simple plan. It is, and it really is. 
And I always tell people, power is knowledge, and knowledge is power. And you got to understand that. And it's no matter what you do in life, you got to have that. And it's very important. It really is. That's what I said last, you know, on our last episode, that quote from the Bible, God himself said this, my people perish from lack of knowledge. That is correct. God didn't lie. He was telling the truth, that's for sure. Uh, you know, one thing we've got to understand about God, Chris, is that he's perfect. He does not lie. He does not break his promises. When he says he'll do something, he'll do it. He's perfect. We're not perfect. We're far, far from perfect. I've often said I'm not a great man of faith. I wish I was. Uh, we're all far from perfect because that's what we are. We're human. But God is perfect. Jesus said, no one is good. No, no one but the Father. He is, And by good, he meant perfect, too, because he's holy. That's what makes God holy and righteous. He's perfect. He doesn't mess up. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't go back on his word. He, you can bank on God. He is the true deal, the real deal, okay? And if you realize that and put that in a relationship with him in that respect, he's got your back, okay? That's the way it goes. You're absolutely right, and and that's what's sad. So uh, spiritual warfare on cryptic encounters just made another comment. Bear with me. Uh, I'm posting and, and answering questions. Uh, he, they say, uh, let me click on it, that we are children of God. It's our birthright to make it in the kingdom of heaven. Satan wants us to deceive us. We are stronger than anything that God casted down from heaven. And that's actually true. Oh, but, yeah. but we have to rebuke that and we have to oh, yeah. follow in the Lord's footsteps and Jesus Christ. You know, exactly. and, and that's what is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Just because you believe doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. There's other necessary steps that you must take. And, like I said earlier, you can't say, oh, I'm not good enough, or uh, I did this, and now I'm good enough to go. That's not what it's about. It's the gift that God gives you. If you accept that gift, then you will go to heaven. But if you don't accept that gift, I'm sorry, your fate will be otherwise. Okay, it's not about how good you are, how many good deeds you do, what church you belong to, what the denomination you are, whatever the case may be, or how much, how many cars you got in your garage, or how much money you got in the bank. It don't matter. Okay, we all are the same in the eyes of God. We either accept His gift or we don't. Yes, no and that, absolutely Thank right. You. Absolutely right. And, you know, and, and I hear this all the time. Well, I'm such a good person. I'm going to go to heaven. And it's just like, you know, I want to set him down and just like, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not a valiant guy. Oh. And I'm like, no, that's not true. Okay. You know, uh, unfortunately, uh, men of cloth are taking classes and they're being taught by teachers pastors, reverends, whoever. And there's so many different translations out there of the Bible. It's being polluted. It's just, you know, it's being contaminated. And the true meaning is not coming out to where it should be. Now, is it their fault? No, I don't want to blame it that way. Now, like some people will turn it around and say, this is my perception, um, and that I have a problem with, and I don't mean to hit anybody's nerves when I say this, but the first thing that comes to mind is David Koresh in the Waco, Texas. He thought he was the second coming. He thought he was the Messiah, and people believed in him. Yes, people believed in him. And, you know, and it's just like, uh, hello, uh, what do y'all, what in the world? And, you know, there, there will be many false prophets, ladies and gentlemen. It states that oh, in yeah. the Bible. Oh, yeah. And there are uh, also, Chris, there are uh, demonic teachings out there. 
uh, you know, when the Bible was first written, some of the uh, part of the New Testament, the, the Gnostics came out and tried to change things around. They tried to, you know, that's why we don't have a lot of the Gnostic, the Gnostic texts in our Bible because they tried to change things around to their own perception. We've got to remember, it's not our perception. It's God's perception that we need to, to, to look at. It's not how we perceive things. It's God, how God perceives things and tells them. We can't change that because, you know, the, the Bible said clearly, even if an angel from heaven comes down with another gospel, don't you accept it, okay? And I know certain instances in certain religions, and I'm not going to call any names tonight where that did happen. But they got the wrong, they got the bad gospel. They got the wrong gospel. I'm sorry. There's only one gospel. There's only one truth to God, and that's it. And we've, done, we've already talked about that tonight. And if you don't accept that gift, then, you know, you're going to be lost. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it goes. I don't care what religion you are. I don't know if the Pope blesses you. I don't really care because that's not what's going to count. It's going right. to be that gift, whether you turn your back on God or not, whether you accept it. And that's just the way it goes. But we've got to understand it's not how we perceive things. Religion, and we've talked about this before, Chris, it's just man's way of putting God in a box. Now, oh, I want God to be this way. And I'll put him in my little Catholic box or my little Protestant box. This is the way I want God to be. That's not, that's man-made stuff. God doesn't recognize that. Let me ask you a quick question. What denomination was Jesus? None. There you go. He was yeah. a Jew and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I mean, no, I that's mean... it. God doesn't authorize these denominations, okay? I'm sorry. I hate to tell you that, but they don't. He didn't authorize them. Man did. Man went to war in the name of God and killed thousands in the name of God. God didn't authorize that. Well, I don't see the papers for it. Well, and I don't either. And, you know, and that's why I tell people, whatever you believe, on, believe in, I'm not going to try to change whatever your faith is. You know, believe what you want to believe in whatever i'm not going to change your mind i'm not going to downgrade whatever you believe in that's not me that's not what i'm here for i'm here to tell you what i know either you take it or leave it or blow it out my rear end however you want to say it i mean i heard it before hey it doesn't affect me because here's the deal ladies and gentlemen when it's my time to pass Grizzly knows, ladies and gentlemen, where he's going. Now, whether it's you, doesn't matter to me. It's not my responsibility to answer for your sins. Okay? That's up to you. Now, spiritual encrypted encounters, that's why we take authority through Jesus' name against exactly. the falling one-third of Satan. So... What he's referring to is, ladies and gentlemen, when Satan fell from heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. And that was thousands upon thousands upon tens of thousands of tens of millions. thousands of angels. We don't know. We really don't yes. know theologically. But they're there. And, and look, if he could talk a third of the angels out of heaven, he could certainly convince you of things if you're not careful okay uh he's really smart that way believe me uh you know i told you before what god said about Satan, lucifer whatever name you want to give him this is what god said about him, okay you are the most beautiful the most intelligent the most perfect thing i've ever created that's what he was saying about say but yet pride is in your heart sin is pride. And that is your adversary. That's who he was. He was smart, beautiful. He can appear as a beautiful angel of light, but don't you let that fool you, okay? Because that's just his appearance. You know, we, we are human. We tend to judge a book by its cover. You know? <laughs> yes, know? we do. So we got to yes, be careful. Uh, yeah. So spiritual cryptid encounter says everything has to be done through Jesus Christ. Then you're right. Exactly. It, exactly. It, it, it is the truth. And, you know, and it, it, it aggravates the fire of me because it goes back One to day. the pledge of the legion. That, One day, Chris, yes, when sir. you die, when you die, Chris, 
one day you're going to die. I am too. We all got to go that way one day, unless something else happens before then. But when you die one day, you will stand before the bar of God, the, the judgment throne. And God's going to say, uh, this is Grizzly Chris here. I don't. I don't know, you know, let's see, so he got his name in the book here, you know, and they'll say, yeah, blah, 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 right, right here, it's a voucher, got G signed by Jesus, okay, let him in, he's one of mine, okay, uh, that's where that voucher comes in at, you accepted that, that signature, okay, on your receipt, and that's what's going to count in that book of life. Okay, and that's what the, you know, the Bible says that when we die, they're going to open our books. That's more than one book, by the way. The books that tell our life story, that tell the thought, every thought we ever thought, every action we ever done, everything we didn't do, by the way, the things we could have done, you know, everything is going to be there. But when that voucher's put out with that signature on it, signed in blood, by the way, then you can go. You can go to the good place. You can go be, be with the good guys because that's the way it runs. But if you don't have that voucher signed, I'm sorry. You're not going to go where you need to go. You're going to go to the bad place. Well, I mean, you're, I mean, Mr. Carroll, I mean, I, there's no other way to put it. I mean, you're absolutely right on that. I mean, it is what it is. And either can people can take it at face value, what we're talking about, and research it and agree or they can disagree and continue on their journey as they are and find out the hard way which is not our responsibility and the spiritual choice is, uh, the choice is ours chris that's so very true the choice is ours we're not robots god's not going like i said earlier gonna come down and slap you around and make you do something it doesn't work that way. The devil's good at stuff like that but god doesn't do that that's not the way god works he doesn't want robots he didn't create the angels to be robots. Look, they had to show us too. Think about that, you know? So yes. The, the whole thing is, what choice are you going to make? You know, are you going to make the right choice or the wrong choice? The choice is yours, though. It's not anybody else's. God can't make the choice for you. Nobody can make it. You got to make it yourself. And that's the way it goes. Let's hope you make the right choice and not the wrong one. Because your eternal, eternal, reality rest on that choice you know well and and unfortunately mr carroll you're right and not only you're right it's written in scripture uh it's actually told across many different types of religions so i mean how can somebody actually you know rebuke that so i cannot believe it's that time already so, what's going to be our topic for next show, Mr. Carroll? Do you have any idea? Well, I've been thinking about the paranormal and uh, the demonic. So some of the attributes of the paranormal, uh, not just the demonology, okay? We're going to talk about paranormal and the demonic. You, know? you want to say a little yeah. prayer before we finish out here? Yes. Let me turn down the music a little bit. So. All right. Yeah, respect to the Lord. Okay, go ahead, sir. I know since we've uh, we've been uh, doing a little bit of a dark subject tonight, and we don't want any negative things to follow us or harass us in any way. So let's say a little prayer of protection. Oh, Lord God Almighty, Creator of the universe, Heavenly Father, we ask you humbly in the name of Jesus Christ, the one name that I said earlier that is that all power is given in heaven and earth. We ask you in His name, the Son of Your begotten son the name of your son that you bless us and that you protect us that you walk through our lives and through our houses through our situations that you bless us physically spiritually mentally emotionally that you bless our finances that you heal us and safeguard us against diseases that you lift us up lord and give us a better relationship with you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask that this protection of your holy angels now be upon us until we meet again. May God keep us, guard us, guide us, in the most holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, Mr. Carroll, have you noticed our background? <laughs> have you noticed that? 
Have you checked yeah, it out? Yeah, 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 I heard that. Yeah. So, have you noticed in the top right hand corner? Have you seen it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I fixed it. Oh yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I fixed it. All right. All right. All right, that's ladies another, and gentlemen. Another, they used to say that's another wrinkle on your horn. Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah. No southern saying. And that the truth, you know. But, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it's been a real heck of a show. Uh, very emotional for Maria. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going through stuff like that, reach out. Uh, I do have kits available. I usually do it in person. I don't mind shipping them to you. Uh, I can't promise that they will work. Like I said, you got to be pure heart. You got to have faith. Uh, we always rep for our recommend clergymen or somebody in the area to help you out. But we, we, we can do only what we can do to help you in recommendation. From coast to coast and around the world, uh, we greatly appreciate you tuning in. Please make sure and like us, follow us, and subscribe to us. Uh, we actually had our email up there earlier. I don't know if you caught that or not. I'm going to throw it back up here once I find this. It's called demonologytoday at gmail.com. Uh, send your comments, suggestions. Uh, anything, uh, Mr. Carroll and I do uh, monitor that email 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, yeah, Mr. Carroll, any last, uh, why am I so big and you're so small? Let's uh, fix that. There we go. That, that's a lot better. So, you have any yeah. last words? Well, uh, I would say, you know, don't take, uh, don't take everything at face value. Always ask questions. Seek the answers and look for the real truth of the matter. That's where it counts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from Mr. Keller or Mr. Keller, Mr. Carroll and Grizzly. Thanks again for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. Until next Sunday, feel free to reach Take out care. to us and let us know if you need help with anything. And you'll have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.